Nowadays, free AI image generators are hard to come by, and recently this company, Piglumen, they got in touch with me to check out their product, and I want to share it with you all. Now to get started with Piglumen, go ahead and click Launch App. You'll be asked to log in via Google or Apple account or via email. Once you sign up, you'll be directed to the Explore page where you can sift through these images, get some inspiration. If you click on the images here, you'll see the prompt and all the pertinent information. Now, before you do start to create, I do want to point out, currently it supports these various languages. You have your FAQs here. There's some tutorial documentation, dark and light mode. And if you click on the three dots here, I want you to go into your settings. And here's where you can set your image visibility, public or private. And this option will clear your prompt after generation. So I set it to no. One other thing to point out, if you hover over the three dots again, click on usage dashboard, it'll tell you how many generations you've had today and your total generations. Now to create images, just go to the left menu, click on create, and you'll be brought to their user interface, which is actually pretty simple to use. The first option here we have are the models that are supported. The three models are pick lumen models. So we have realistic V2, anime V2, and Lineart V1, and recently they've added Flex Snell. And I'm gonna show you some examples in just a few minutes. Over here, we have our aspect ratios. So you have your typical ones, one by one, 69, three by four, three by two, so on and so forth. There's quite a few options you can select from. You can't change the aspect ratio manually. However, these are the most common ones. And here you can select whether you want to create one to four images. One thing to keep in mind, regardless of the quantity that you generate, you can only generate one batch at a time so you'll have to wait for each generation to finish now here is where you would put your prompt so i'm going to paste a prompt in here mine is zoomed in so it should look more like this but i've got it zoomed in so you can see it now if you happen to be prompting in a different language you can use this to auto translate it and also if you're not great at prompting you could put a basic prompt in here let's say i take out this portion of my prompt and we click on this option called prompt enhance i'm assuming it's using some sort of language model and then it's going to enhance your prompt for you if we click on this icon this is where you're going to get your settings for your negative prompt your cfg scale steps and your seed now if you use flux snell you don't have any access to this except for seed, which I'm assuming is set to its default settings. And then on the top left of the prompt box is where you would find their version of control nets. Either upload an image from here, or let's say I pick this image here. You see there's content reference, style reference, and character reference. I'm going to show you these a little bit later as well. I want to show you a few examples of their realistic V2 model. Here's a portrait of a tribal chief and you see that it looks very photorealistic. I find it helps if you use words like analog, photo, Polaroid, or film photography, supporting words that support photorealism. Here's another example where I used analog Polaroid photo at the beginning of the prompt to get this effect. And to be completely honest, I love this model. If I were to guess, it's based on SDXL because it does prompt very similar to it. And the hands seem to be a bit more fine-tuned. It feels like a photorealism fine-tuned model based on SDXL. For this image, I use the Piclumen Anime V2 model. It does anime very well. You can throw any prompt at it, even if it's a photorealistic one, and it gives you this nice traditional anime look. Here's another example here where I'd probably have to fix the hands here, but overall, really nice image it produces. Now the line art model is something I'm really excited about. If you take a look at this example, you'll see that there's no shading. The line art it produces probably the best that I've seen in any model out there. Every now and then you'll get some shading here, but that's totally acceptable. And the great thing about this is that you can colorize it, which we'll look at later, but it's one of the cleanest line art models that I've ever come across. And as mentioned before, you see here, Flush Snell, their 
there is support for Flex Snail. I'm not sure if Dev is going to be supported anytime soon, probably because of the licensing terms. But if you've been wanting to try Flex Snail, you can't run it locally. This online site might be perfect for you. Just be mindful with Flex Snail. It doesn't have that photorealism that Flex Dev has. You can prompt for it, obviously, but it tends to have a little bit of that hyper realistic look. Now I'm going to show you their versions of control nets where you can use a reference image. We're going to click on this icon here and you can upload your file or use an existing one. So I'm going to select that image. And for this one, I'm going to use it as a content reference. So think of this one as like canny and pose where it'll take the outlines, the edges, the composition, all of that it'll take into context, but you can do a different prompt to just change change the look of the main subject. You have a strength slider here. Obviously the higher it is, the more influence the reference image will be. And here's the result of the generated image. I used more of a samurai type of prompt. So I took this reference image of Spider-Man, used a samurai prompt instead, and I got this result. So it works really well. Next, I'm going to select this image and switch this to style reference. So the goal for me here is to adopt the colors and the textures of this image. This time I'm gonna use like a Android warrior type of prompt. Let's bring up the strength to about 0.7. I want the colors and texture to be more dominant. All right, we have a few examples here. Let's click on one. So as you can see, it adopts the colors, some of the textures of the reference image especially in the background here. So if we wanted more of the reference image to come through, we can increase the strength even more. And then the last reference control they have, I'm gonna select this image, is the character reference. Now, this is a great way to get consistent faces. Let's say you have a reference image of a character that you wanna use, you can bring this all the way up to one if you want the likeness to be exact. If we look at the generated images that I did, the faces look exactly identical. Now you won't get consistent attire, that's still gonna change, but at least you can get consistent faces using character reference. Now, just a quick note, you can't use the reference function with Flex Snell, at least at the time of recording this video. It only works with the Picklumen models. There are quite a few other options available. If you hover over the image, you see here, if you click on this, there's an upscale option here. You can go from 1.25 up to two times bigger. And the redraw option here is if you wanna fix faces and hands, default is at 0.3. I find the default works pretty well. You can try to increase it, but you want to be careful not to go too high and overuse it. It may end up just ruining your image. If I zoom in here, the face isn't bad. It does lack some details in the eyes here. The mouth looks okay. The hands aren't as defined. But now using the upscaler, you see the eyes look a lot more cleaner. So does the mouth. The hands could use some work still, probably would have to inpaint that, but it's a good way to fix faces, eyes, all those little details. Now if we hover over the three dots here, we have some more options. You can copy that link to share it, download, remix, remixes if you want to use the same prompt, same settings, and just create variations. We have remove background, we'll test this in a bit. You can inpaint, expand which is outpainting, colorize and delete. And if you click on the image you get the same options here but on this screen you have your full prompt, your negative prompt and all the details of your image. And you also have a thumbnail gallery here of the images that you've created. I'm going to create something simple like an apple on a table. Let's go ahead and generate that. So let's take this image here and we're gonna remove the background. And there you go, it happened pretty quick. And now you have a transparent PNG. Now, obviously it may struggle if the image is really busy, especially in the background, but in this case, it actually did a really good job. So extra marks for the background remover. Let's try to inpaint something in here. And the interface is actually really simple. Here's where you can increase the brush size. And I'm gonna do something really quick here. Let's do like a pair. I'm just gonna put in the prompt box here, pair, click submit. 
And now we have a nice pear right beside the apple. I can see a bit of remnants from the mask, but we can always fix that in post-production, but it works pretty well. Now let's try to expand the image. So once you click expand, you can click on two times or one and a half times. And it's sort of like Adobe's generative fill where you can increase the frame around it and expand it that way. Or maybe you want to do it more like 69 ratio and you want to bring these out. It's really up to you. I'm just going to put in the prompt apple and pear on the table and we're going to expand this image. You see it extended the table here and the surrounding. Now mind you, this is a really simple example, but it worked pretty well in my opinion. Next, I want to show you the colorize option for your line art. If you hover over this icon, you see it says colorize. Now the way this works, you just have to specify where these colors are going to be. So let's say the beast is gray and white with purple and black armor. And then I'm going to put the ground is green and brown. Let me zoom in here a bit. Gray buildings. And then we'll put night skies. We're going to hit submit. And there you go. Now it didn't follow it exactly to the T. The beast is kind of gray on these spots, but we see the purple also bleated onto him. And we've got some orangey type of color here, but it did sort of follow my direction. We've got the night sky, the grass is green, or maybe we have to do it one step at a time. Let's try beast with gray fur. Armor is black and purple. Okay, so that did work better on the fur. He is gray. Now the armor is not black and purple. Well, we see a little bit of purple. That's definitely not black. Now with that being said, it's not too bad. It's a good way to color your line art. It would be even better if we could kind of brush the area where we wanted to color. That's a good idea. So overall, I think for a free site, they have a lot to offer. The one thing I'd like to see is Laura's or different styles. And I don't know what it is with these AI generated sites where there's no organization for these images. Now, if I scroll down far enough, it is organized by date. There you go. You see a little date marker there, but there's no way to organize albums, even like a favorites button. And for the life of me, I can't even find where you can submit it to the gallery. I'm assuming that you'd have to go back into your settings and put this on public for your images to show up in the main explorer gallery. Now, other than that, considering it's a free site, I've been having a lot of fun on it. Let me know in the comments below if this is something you think will be useful for you and maybe give some feedback on the features that you're looking for. Now, if you're looking for other online solutions, there's also CG Dream.ai or Leonardo AI. Make sure to check out any one of these videos. And until those next videos, I'll see you when I see you.